You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. So late Friday, U.S. District Judge Allison J. Nathan of the Southern District of New York issued a landmark decision that said New York State's refusal to include inactive voters on poll ledgers used in polling places on Election Day violates the Equal Protection Clause of the United States Constitution and the National Voter Registration Act of 1993. The Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law, together with several other organizations, filed suit in federal court in New York on behalf of Common Cause New York in 2017 to restore the voting rights of more than one million inactive New York voters. Judge Nathan cited extensive evidence that New York's practice of moving voters to inactive status based on a single piece of returned election mail resulted in tens of thousands of voters improperly moved to inactive status due to widespread postal service errors. They're going to blame that on the post office. You know that's wrong. Uh, the judge found that the refusal to include the names of inactive voters on lists used at polling places caused disenfranchisement, confusion, and delay for voters across New York. This is another victory for voters. Oh my goodness. So, um, you know, it's really interesting to see what's going on with voting rights right now anyway. I mean, it's good to have something that's maybe a victory because actually there have been so many things that has gone wrong, millions of mm -hmm. people all over. I think that this next election will come down to not just turnout, but just the level to which the voting polls have, you know, the voting rolls have been purged in key states across this nation. Well, well this is why the, the issue of voter uh, voter education is so crucial, because we have voter purges. I'm from Georgia. We have a voter purge in Georgia, Wisconsin. But the way that the solution to a voter purge, uh, one is fighting it through the court, but also to educate the electorate that to understand whether or not you're in active status, to uh, look, not just look out for this mail, the best way to not be purged is to vote yeah. in more elections. So I think that's the, the information we have to get out to people, to not just wait for the presidential election to vote. Vote for dog catcher. Vote for county commissioner. Vote for whatever comes up. We have elections all year round, uh, all year round in most municipalities, and we get more people in the habit of voting and not simply waiting for the major elections. Then we have far fewer issues. No, I, I think that absolutely uh, makes sense yeah. because people like to point towards the voter purges in some of the um, some of the hard fought states. But to be frank, voter purges exist in 45 states right now. Um, doesn't matter whether they're conservative or liberal states. They exist. At my home state of Illinois, the place where I vote, we have them as well. Um, they will send you something in the mail. If you haven't voted in the past three, four elections, you're going to get a reminder, hey, you might want to sign up or you might want to go and, you know, check, see if your address and everything is correct because you go next time, you might not be able to, you might not be able to actually vote. So I do think there's something to be said about Americans in general voting beyond just the presidential election and also understanding that just because you registered to vote that one time doesn't mean that when you show up, up 15 years from now, everything may not be in the clear. Yeah. It may be, it may not be, but you might want to vote a little bit more actively. It's just interesting, though, to me that in America, it just seems like we go out of our way to make it hard for people to vote okay. than we do to make it easy for people to vote. I mean, you know, if I decide tomorrow that I don't want to drive my car for three years, I should still have my license, and I do still have my we license. We are way yeah, too think... concerned with voter fraud, um, even though it's in less than 1% of cases that it actually happens. And I think that we yeah. have put so much in place to restrict it and to make sure that we diminish it. That Again, this 1% that we never actually see happen anyway. Um, when it comes to voter fraud, we continue to make more and more laws and regulations around it when it's actually not something that is actively happening. Mm. Agreed. And I think the bigger issue is, and I go back to what Robert is, it's education. Folks need to understand that if you don't vote, that's the part, you're going to get purged. That's the laws in 45 states. And so we, need, we have more power with our vote on local levels than we do on a national level. Mm -hmm. And so if people could, could just get that understanding and get out and vote, like you said, even if it's a dog catcher or whatever it is. But here's the thing, it's, it's a big picture. A I agree with you, but it's the big picture that we don't value and we don't support voting because it's easy to say people should get out to vote. But if you don't have control over your schedule, if you are just trying to make it and the only time the poll is open, you have to be at work and you're told if you don't show up, you're going to lose your job. And it's the reason why people don't vote. It's not that they don't care all the time, which, is, which I think is our faulty assumption. If we had voting on holidays, if we had it on weekends, we would have more people voting. And, we and go we out of our way to make it hard for people to vote in this If country. we elevated the importance of races beyond the presidency. Right. Because at the end of the day, a lot of people only show up to vote for the presidency mm -hmm. because they see that as the top priority and the one that's mattering the most. 
close. That's when in right. all honesty, and I think that Robert said it earlier, a lot of your daily life is more affected by what's happening at the state and local level than it is at the federal level anyway. Yeah. And, 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 and also, I think that this was a suggestion 20 years ago for the DNC that any candidate for president needs to be putting as much money into voter education, voter registration, yes. voter mobilization as they are into stupid commercials and attack ads. Because guess what? It doesn't matter how many people you uh, tell about Hunter Biden. If people aren't turning up to vote, it really doesn't matter. So we need to get the parties, the stakeholders invested in getting people to the polls on election on election day, early voting, uh, and making sure that we monitor what these new voting regulations are so that we're not showing up uh, on antiquated rules. If, if your jurisdiction used to have 21 days of early voting and now it's 10. Right. We have to make sure that people know that. Absolutely. So we'll continue the discussion right after the break. You want to check out Roland Martin Unfiltered? YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roland Martin Unfiltered. See that name right there? Roland Martin Unfiltered. Like, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so when we go live, you'll know it. Martin.